there are ways to control who can see your data, but a lot of it sneaks out in ways that you don't want. So some of that can be automated, like if you use an app, the app can access some of your data, even if you have everything set to prevent it from doing that. A lot of times installing the app overrides your privacy settings. But then there's also human beings, right, who just want to tell stuff to other people. And so even if you have your privacy settings all controlled and locked down, if one person who sees it wants to tell somebody else, they can make a copy, they can take a screenshot, they can share it around in all kinds of different ways. And so you really shouldn't rely on anything that you put online truly remaining private or just among you and your friends. The real challenge is for marketers and, and kind of anyone who's using this data to convince people that it's in their interest to share things. And Netflix and Amazon have done a really good job with this, right? Where Netflix would be so hard to use or, or any of these music streaming services if it wasn't suggesting other stuff that you want because then you're just on your own in this like massive space of data and options to find something. And everybody knows that that's really hard and so they're okay rating stuff and they know that that's going to be used to make recommendations. And I think we're used to that on shopping sites now. A lot of e-commerce sites have it, you know, if you bought this, oh, maybe you want these things. That's really helpful sometimes, whether it's like, oh, you bought an aquarium, buy some rocks for the aquarium that you would have forgotten, or just like, oh, here's a dress that you bought, maybe you should get these shoes to go with it. So that, that's something that we're used to and we're comfortable with. And the question is, you know, if you extend it into, say, advertising, where are people okay with it? The future prediction line is one of the hardest ones, because uh, one, people don't believe it, even though our algorithms are right a lot of the time. Uh, but it can feel really upsetting. You know, an example that I talked about was that we can predict with very high accuracy if people entering treatment for alcoholism will recover or not. I don't think you want to be telling people that it's not going to work for them, right? Even if the algorithms say so. Now, there's a way to use that, right? It could say you'll improve your chances of recovery if you stop spending time with people who drink all the time, which is one of the factors that we use. Or if you go see a therapist to work on your coping style, right? So there are ways to make suggestions there. Uh, but yeah, it can be troubling and feel very violating, uh, especially if you think about health conditions. Oh, you're at risk for developing obesity. So here I'm going to, I'm your insurance company. I'm going to rec uh, recommend that you go on a diet or enter this wellness program or increase your rates because of future risk, right? There's a lot of really scary stuff there, um, which may or not, may not be legal even in some cases to do. And so I, it's one of those spaces where we're just realizing how much power we have with the algorithms. There have been maybe a dozen of these studies. Uh, and so that is going to have to make us think about, well, now what do we do? Now that that power is here and the data is here and the algorithms are here, how are we going to handle that once companies get a hold of it and can make money from it? How do you determine the line, I think, is going to vary from industry to industry. Um, so I get emails every week from companies that want me to consult on them doing stuff like this. And I don't take any of them because I want to kind of stay objective, right, and out of the place where I'm getting money <laughs> for this. Um, but, you know, I think, for example, hiring is one place that a lot of people think this has power. Are you going to fit in well at my company? Are you somebody who's going to stick around? Do you work well in teams? Um, I've had Major League Baseball teams contact me about this, but also kind of standard talent search HR companies, right? I think a lot of people, if I could say, look, you're going to fill out this, we're going to look at your profile, we're going to infer these things, it's going to help match you with the right job. People might be okay with that. Where if I say, I'm going to change whether or not you can get a loan based on what your friends do. That feels a lot scarier, right? Even if I have very responsible friends, suddenly there's a lot at risk there that feels like it might be a violation. And then certainly when we get into things like health issues, sexual issues, religious issues, like the really personal kinds of things, then it starts to feel really bad. And we're starting to see that now in the US in our ongoing mess of an election. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about how Ted Cruz's campaign was actually using exactly these algorithms to predict things about people to kind of target them with messages for the campaign. And that feels really weird, even though we get targeted with campaign messages all the time. So I think you have to look at the specific application and then it's going to involve a lot of standard marketing stuff, focus groups and talking to people and testing stuff out and gauging their response and kind of balancing how much are you willing to upset people versus how much money do you think you're going to make from it. Um, and if you go too far over that line, 
you'll lose your ability to make money from it. So there's going to be a tough balancing act in the you know, coming decade as we figure out the right way to use this and test the boundaries of those lines.